to Paul Painting with Ron. In today's video we're going to be doing a travelling wiggle paw. Well that's what I call it anyway. I'm not sure if it's the proper name but that's what we're going to do, a travelling wiggle paw. Now I'm experimenting with a few different things at the moment so it'll be interesting to see how the, the painting today works out. Now I'm going to be doing it on a, a 40 by 50 thin edge canvas and just the, like usual I using some push pins stuck in the back and some painters tape to just to keep the edges tidy. Now you may notice that I'm using it on my paint spinner today. I'm not going to spin it out but because I want to um, do the paint in a sort of a, a wiggly sort of pattern I thought it's easier turning my canvas around on a spinner than trying to turn my jug around in different directions but we'll see how that goes <clears throat> anyway today but anyway the paints I'm going to use today are all metallics so I've kept them rather on the thick side today as you do with metallics and I don't really want the colors blending too much either so it's another reason for keeping the mix on the on the thicker side today <clears throat> well it's a theory anyway well I'm using the Eraldo brand of paints today and I if you live in Australia you can get them from Riot Art they're a brand specific to Riot Art stores they're really nice and I I usually just pick them up when they're on sale usually 50% off sale and I pay about $10 for a tub of this size 500 mils now I'm using five different colors today I'm using metallic rainforest a nice green a metallic lavender and metallic treasure um, what's this one metallic waves they are interesting names for their paints and uh, metallic fuchsia so hopefully I'll get a really nice bright tropical looking painting today and the pouring medium I'm using today is just Floetrol and I'm not using any silicon or anything like that in the mix today now for a canvas of this size I need about 800 grams of paint or so so I've divided that up amongst the five colors evenly now these paints tend to mix up fairly thin so usually I use a one-to-one -one mix of paint and flow troll but this time I've used a little more paint than flow troll in the mix to get the, the right consistency you'll see what that is in a little bit so let's get started right so I've got all my paints mixed up and I've tried to get the same amount of each color in the same consistency so I'll just show you the consistency I've got they're rather they're rather thick if I do a twirl with the paint the paint stays on the surface for three or four seconds so it is quite quite thick um, which I'm hoping will keep the colors sort of separated in the painting rather than all blending together now I thought about the order I'm putting my colors in um, so I get less chance of getting mud or too much green so we'll see how we go so I'll just put these aside and then I'll I'll show you what I'm going to use to pour the paint now normally I'd use a cup to pour the paint onto the canvas but because I'm using so much paint I can't fit all my paint in one cup and I don't really want to use two cups today so in Kmart I found this rather interesting water jug I didn't want anything too wide like a lot of measuring jugs are I wanted something that was more or less cup sized but I could fit more paint in so I thought I'd give this jug a go today it was only eight dollars at Kmart I think hopefully it, it'll work well now I'm going to be pouring the paint in um, down the sides of my mug rather than straight in the middle I'll change it up a little bit I'll pour one layer from this side and then when I do the second layer of colors I'll pour from the other side and I'll alternate 
just to see see what happens. Well, you never know. All right, so I'll start off with a, a little bit of gold. I'll just dribble it down the side. Oh, it's a long way down. I was hoping to get a clear one, but so you could see what I was doing, but no such luck. a little bit so I don't drip all over my painting right let's put that aside else I didn't want to put it in a straight line on my painting I wanted to do a bit of a swirly pattern and I thought it Rather than trying to manoeuvre the jug around in a, in a pattern, which is a bit tricky, I thought I'd put my canvas on my um, spinner so I can just turn the canvas instead of the jug. I thought that might be easier, so we'll have a go and see if that works. Now, I don't want to start too close to the edge because I want to spread everything out. So I'll start up this way a bit and I'll sort of like do a, a wiggly sort of snake pattern. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now, I do want to get my jug fairly close to the surface, but I can't being so long so that the more I pour out, the closer to the surface I can get. So hopefully you can see. And as I pour, I'll wiggle backwards and forwards. seems to work quite well. I'm going to lose most of what's on this side. I'll get out as much as I can. It's looking pretty. Okay. I'll just remove my spinner. I think the spinner worked really well. Much easier than trying to turn the jug around. Ooh, okay, that looks interesting. I like the designs. I hope I don't lose too much of it. I'll just give it a bit of a torch to get rid of some air bubbles. I did mix up my paint yesterday, but there's always a few air bubbles. Almost tempted to leave it like that. It's almost a shame to stretch it. But anyway, let's see. Now, you don't have to go fast. So I might go up to this corner first. Now, 
I don't want to lose too much paint yet. Okay. Bring it back to the middle. And then I'll go down to this corner. to the middle I might do that corner up there I like that pattern I don't really want to lose it but I may end up losing it Okay, and then we'll go down to the other corner. Hmm. Getting very interesting patterns and the metallics will just look lovely. If you don't have enough paint, you don't have much room to manoeuvre to get your composition right. Okay. Now we'll just play with the comp composition a bit. It looks a bit like bamboo. Mm -hmm. Don't want to mess with things too much because you tend to get mud. I did lose most of my magenta. Hmm. Well, it turned out really cool. I like this traveling wiggle paw. My hands are gross. Now I'll just tidy up the edges. I can pick up paint to do the corners that I may have missed. This will look interesting when it's dry because of all the metallics. Metallics really only come into their own once the paint dries. You don't really see them beforehand. It's certainly bright. Tropical looking. I actually liked it before I stretched it out, but yeah, not much we can do about that. I have to think about what I can do to keep little tight patterns rather than big stretched out ones, if you get what I mean. I like it. Didn't really get mud, which is always a danger with that sort of colour combination. I use sort of several primary colours all together in the same painting and the, the risk of mud when you do that is always there. 
but I didn't really get the mud today. Now getting cleaning the drips up of course is, is cosmetic. You don't want horrible drips hanging off the end of your painting when it dries. But drips can also pull painting uh, paint off your canvas. That's why we're careful to get rid of these drips that fall off the side. Also make sure your canvas is level. If it isn't, then your paint is going to run off one side as it dries. I do get nice swirly patterns like I was after. I think it's just beautiful, especially with the metallics. Just about done, and then I'll I'll bring you in for a closer look. All right, hopefully you can see it. I'm holding the camera above my head, so hopefully it's in frame. I will come down for a closer look. You can see that the colours are lovely. I think this particular part here reminds me of a bamboo stem. Don't you think? I think it's just so pretty. Then we've got the lovely blue and turquoise patch in the middle. And here we've got some more gold and purple again on this side again, reminding me a little bit of bamboo, just a bit more stretched out than on the other side. And I think the overall effect is lovely. Well, that was definitely an interesting experience, wasn't it? I think the overall effect of the painting is really lovely. I like how I like all the swirls and the color combinations that we ended up getting by twirling the canvas around a little bit as I wiggled the paint out of the jug. I'll certainly be doing it again because there's just heaps of creative possibilities with this technique. I'll use the jug again. That was really great, great size for larger canvases. And the spinner really made it easy to change directions. Maybe you will consider giving that a go if you're doing a painting that needs you to move things around a little bit. It works really well. Now, I hope I've really I've inspired you to give things a go yourself. That's the whole idea of these videos. Let me know how you go. Now, I'm going to clean up. And I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. As usual, if you like what you saw today, please press the like button. It helps other people who are interested in this sort of thing to find my video on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more of what I do, please take a moment to subscribe. So we'll see you next time and happy painting.